Hello, I'm Dom Lawson from Metal Hammer uh, and I'm here to talk about King 810. Uh, a few weeks ago, I traveled to Flint in Michigan, in the United States, uh, to meet King 810. Uh, it was obvious from the first time that we heard Memoirs of a Murderer, the, the, the extraordinary debut album, uh, that this was a band not just with uh, a genuinely fascinating backstory, uh, but with uh, huge creativity to back that up. Having spent two days with them in Flint, um, I can you know, cheerfully confirm that they are 100% for real and that everything that, um, that you hear on that album comes from a place of sincerity. This is not a band that are strutting around uh, giving it loads of bravado and pretending to be tough guys. I can see how people might see that on a, uh, might kind of pick up on that on a superficial level from some of the songs but once you dig deeper and especially in conversation with David uh, it soon becomes apparent that there's a hell of a lot more going on underneath the surface. Um, they're a fascinating band, the album is incredible uh, and hopefully the following will uh, give some insight into uh, the mind of David Gunn from King 810. Over the last week, Flint has been living up to its moniker as the most violent city in America. Where Flint is called Murder Town. Flint police are investigating a double homicide on the city's south side. The shots ring out around... When the band was created, I went to jail. And I wrote our first um, songs in, in, uh, in jail. And when I got out, um, I had these few songs ready. And that was kind of how I learned to write. Because I was in solitary a lot without a pencil and paper, you know what I mean? So just uh, remembering full arrangements and full songs and kind of get, you just practice it like everything else and uh, get good at it. When I, when I got out, I already had heard the stuff they were working on before. So I knew what kind of the song sounded like and what they were, they were doing. So I wrote the words and when we got together, it was easy to make them just one thing. As a band, I, as a whole, we just want to reach as many people as possible. We don't have um, kind of uh, tangible goals that we want to achieve as far as um, playing here or getting this award or selling this many thing, any kind of band, typical band goals, it's just more about reaching as many people as possible and that's the general overall goal that kind of uh, takes precedence over anything else. In the group, in the band, in our group of friends and our family and our whole thing that we're doing, it doesn't know any kind of color or race is not even um, acknowledged, I guess. Uh, male or female or black or white or, or any of that, it doesn't, um, doesn't mean anything. None of those things uh, mean anything. I feel like if you wanted to you know, be a part of what we're doing, there's, I feel like it's a natural gravitation towards us. You kind of just have this thing in you, or this little part of you, that is, you know, inclined to what we're doing, and it, you kind of just gravitate towards it. And the knife blade feels ice cold, and I see Had the band weren't around, we would still be here, this group would still be here just as it was, you know, before the band, and it'll still, it'll still be there, you know, after the band, it's... The band is just something that we do, but then, you know, four people in this group happen to, happen to do. Kill them all. Kill them all. Kill them all.